Lobo Records are making a uh, quite a comeback these days. They are. All right, so let's get into learning some um, more chords, and we'll put some more together. Now, before I actually get into some more chords, anybody have any questions about any of the chords that we learned on um, uh, that we learned during lesson five? Okay, so the E major, E minor chords, or the A or A minor, or the D major. Uh, Pranav asks, can we uh, redo the D? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And we're going to see the D major chord uh, today uh, as well. We're going to have to use it. So, again, the D major chord, right? Uh, you know, now, depending on where you might have seen this before, you might have uh, learned some of these in... Um, uh, so you might have seen some of these chords being uh, fretted and fingered in uh, different ways, but this uh, is the most standard way where you have your first finger on the first fret of the G string, third finger on the third fret of the uh, B string, and your second finger on the second fret of the high E string. And then for this one, when you strum... You're strumming, all right, you can strum that A string down to the high E. For the D, for the D major chord and what we'll learn today, the D minor, we don't want to strum that low E string. So you have to be a little bit, um, a little bit um, more precise with your strumming when you're strumming this D major chord, all right? Now, the D minor chord. All right, uh, don't worry, Elena, great to have you here. All right, so for the D minor chord, okay, we have the open D string, and then the second finger's on the second fret of the G string, third finger's on the third fret of the B string, and the first finger is on the first fret of the high E string. Okay, now I'm going to put myself over here. All right. Make myself bigger. And where are we here? There we are. And let's see if that's a little bit of a better angle for everybody. D minor. Sometimes is considered to be the saddest chord, also the saddest key sometimes. All right, we get into a little bit more of that in the Ultimate Guitar Program. Now... Next is the C major chord, okay? Excuse me for that rustling, all right? The C major chord. Now, this uh, might be a little bit tricky for uh, some people as uh, we kind of have to really start uh, or having our fingers ready to be stretched a little bit. And this is all the reason why I gave you everybody the stretching exercises back in lesson two. It all kind of comes back full circle, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So here we have our third finger on the third fret of the A string. Second finger on the second fret of the D string. Then we have the open G. Then the first finger on the first fret of uh, the B string, and then the open high E. Now, if you play the open low E string, that is okay for this chord. That is okay for this chord, okay? So you can actually play every single string. Uh, Hamida has a good question. Can I use my pinky finger instead of my uh, third finger? So the fourth finger instead of the third finger... Do you mean for the C major chord or for the D minor chord? I just want to make sure. Um, Alright, so as Samita is answering that question, okay, I'm going to place myself over here, and maybe if I move the camera a little bit over, wonderful, perfect. So here is this C major shape, okay? Very, very important open chord, all right? Who here has never played the C major chord? Who here has never played the C major chord? Or 
Barb, uh, let me ask you uh, another question. Uh, is this the first time that you have uh, that you have ever played the C major chord? All right, so there I see some people here saying they have never played it before. All right, well, that is uh, very good because that means you are learning something new. Some of you are saying that you have played it before, but it's great. Um, uh, Hamida, for uh, the D minor, you can use your pinky, but for the D major, not really. Uh, it's better if you use your third finger, okay? Now, uh, so uh, how, how are you finding the C major chord? Do you find it a little bit challenging to, um, to kind of stretch the fingers? Because, you know, you, again, this is where that stretching exercise really, really comes in. Okay. All right. Maddox, good. Uh, uh, Debbie says, tough to make it clear. Well, that's okay. That's okay. Um, all right, Bonwin, thank you. All right, so with this chord, again, this is, you know, one of those chords, and, and the next chord as well, that, you know, they are kind of uh, the, the foundation chords. But even though they're foundation, they do require a little bit more, you know, uh, as compared to, let's say, maybe the E major or the E minor. They do, like, kind of push you to, to uh, grasp, literally and figuratively, uh, something a little bit that might still be a little bit behind, but beyond your reach, but that's okay, all right, because you were going to, uh, you know, I'm going to push you to, to be able to do it, and the fact that I'm doing it, all right, means that anybody can do it, okay, so this is the C major chord, the C major chord, now, we're going to learn the next major chord, and again, all of these chords that we're learning, they are, again, some of the foundation chords, all right, and they are used in so many songs. If we can just learn our foundation chords, all right, we will be well on our way to playing hundreds of songs, all right? So, we're going to learn two versions of the G major chord. Uh, the reason why we're going to do that is because uh, some people have more success with one than the other, and so it kind of just depends. This first one is kind of a really big stretch. Okay, so again, uh, you know, it, it's great to go back to your stretching exercises. <clears throat> Excuse me. And really kind of, you know, again, now that you see where they come in, why they're useful, okay, um, really, really great exercises. All right, so uh, third finger on the third fret of the low E string, second fingers on the second fret of the A string, okay, and then we have the fourth finger on the third fret of the high E string. All right, so this is the first variation of the G major chord, all right, and it looks a little something like this, all right, and the reason why this is such a big stretch because we have to get our pinky finger, our fourth finger on this low, on this high E string, and then we have the second finger and the third finger, which are on the low E and A strings. Alright? And then we just do a nice little strum. Alright, again, this is one of the shapes for the G major chord. Okay, the next shape. Uh, <laughs> Irache says, uh, massive stretch for my little fingers. Yes, it can be indeed. Okay, so that's why uh, we're going to learn also the second version, which some people find a little bit easier. Okay, now we're going to have to use all of our fingers for this one. All right, the second finger is on the third fret of the low E string. The first finger is on the second fret of the A string. The open D and G strings are open. Then we have third finger is on the third fret of the B string. Okay, and then we have the fourth finger on the third fret of the high 
E string. So this is the second variation of the G major chord, and it looks a little something like this. Wonderful, Hamida. Wonderful. Okay, so... So you might find this one a little bit easier. Okay. Now, the reason I showed you that first one is because when you go from that first G major to the C major chord, right, there's not all that much movement. All right, there's not all that much movement. And that's a very common movement, right? That C major to the G major or, or G to C is a very, very common movement, as we'll see later. Okay, so, you know, you can do G major, the second variation to the C major chord, if that's what you're comfortable with or want to be comfortable with. Okay, um, so, but it really just depends on... Um, it depends up, up, up to you. Okay, so I see great comments coming in. Nick says, I think the second variation sounds better. Bronwyn says, both are very difficult. Don't worry about it, Bronwyn. You'll get it. Uh, for some saying the first is easier. Some are saying the second is easier. So, again, this is why I give you the both of them. And then whichever one you are most comfortable with, try to play that one. Okay? Um... Mom has a great question. Why is there an extra note in the second variation? Um, it's just a different note, Mom. Uh, it is... And Mom noticed that we have to fret this third fret of the B string rather than leave the B string open. Um, so both of those notes happen to be in the G major chord, except the first variation chooses and uses that open B string, whereas the second variation uses the note that's on the third fret of the B string. Okay? Hope that answers your question. The next chord is what is called a B7 chord. Okay? And this is kind of a funky sounding chord, and we're going to spend more time on, on these kinds of chords uh, in Lesson 7, but I just wanted to give you a little preview of this. And here, uh, we will using all of our fingers, all right? Second finger's on the second fret of the A string. First finger's on the first fret of the D string. Third finger's on the second fret of the G string, the open B string, and then we have the fourth finger is on the second fret of the high E string. Okay, and... Here we are, here I am. I shouldn't say we, because it's just me. Well, it's me and my guitar, so I guess it's we. All right? So here we are. The B7 chord. And we're going to use this uh, next week, but again, just to, just to give a little preview of it. All right, I have a question from Hamida. How many chords are there? Many, many, many chords, but they are all variations of these basic chords, these foundation chords. Um, I really cannot count how many chords there are because there are way too many. Okay? Uh, but again, they are all variations. Uh, so once you learn these foundation chords, uh, everything, again, comes back to them. Right? So even if you don't know any advanced chords, you can always come back to these foundation chords and make the music work. Okay? So, the next chord is what is called a, a D sus 4 chord. Okay? Now, the S-U-S, sus, means suspended. Okay? Now, the reason why it's called a D sus 4 or D suspended 4 uh, goes into uh, musical theory definition. Now, I, we don't need to go into the theoretical definition of this chord now. That is something that we leave more for the Ultimate Guitar Program. All right? But this kind of chord, this suspended chord, uh, has is used 
quite often, and as we'll see in one of the songs that we learn how to play later. Okay? So, the D sus4, if you're trying to uh, figure it out without the um, notes on what finger goes on which fret, um, good job trying to figure it out, but here's a little bit of a helping hand. Here we have the first finger is on the first fret, of, uh, second fret, sorry, of the G string. Third finger is on the third fret of the B string. And then the fourth finger is on the third fret of the high E string. All right. Now, with this chord, okay, uh, Esra, yeah, is that for the B7 or for the D sus4? Okay, so with this chord, all right, this is kind of one of those chords that um, we kind of use to, in combination with another chord, and, and the combination chord that we use it with is the D major. So what I would do with this chord, all right, I would actually, whoa, whoops, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, my camera just went a little bonkers. There, all right. So... Here we have the D major chord. Does everybody remember the D major chord? We reviewed it uh, uh, just before. First finger's on the second fret of the G string, right? Just like the D sus4. Third finger's on the third fret of the B string, right? And the second finger's on the second fret of the high E string. Now, the D suspended four, the D sus4, is used much with the... Um, is used a lot with the D major chord. So all you need to do, all right, to go from one to the other is just place that pinky down. Okay, just place that pinky down. Okay, so you have that D suspended four, right? But I keep my second finger anchored to the second fret of the high E string, all right? Because those two chords, when usually you use a D suspended four chord, what usually follows or what usually precedes it is a D major. So again, we want to try to cut down as much movement as possible. Alright, so I'm just basically going from a D major to a D suspended four, and I get a completely different, completely new type of sound, okay, and uh, that's all that all that the guitar is about, is trying to manipulate the sounds, and so this allows us to do that. So, um, uh, Ezra says it's hard to put the fourth finger down on the second fret of the high E string for the B7 chord, um, you, you know, if this is the first time that you're trying to play this chord, I, I definitely... Uh, agree with you that it is a uh, quite challenging, can be uh, a bit challenging. Uh, do the best that you can, and, um, you know, it's great that you can get your other three fingers into position. Uh, I'd be very proud of that, and uh, you can play, actually, a B7 just by playing those um, initial three strings and frets that you have fretted. Uh, and eventually you want to get that fourth finger on that second fret of the high E string. Um, so again, just try to do your best to force that finger in there. All right, now, ladies and gentlemen, we will continue into learning today's songs. So how about it, ladies and gentlemen? How about it? It's time to level up. All right, uh, any questions, though, about any of these chords? Uh... Uh, I think I just got Esra's. I hope that answered your question. Uh, any other questions about any of these chords before I continue on? All right. Um, don't see any questions coming in, so I will continue on. If there are questions and I miss them, I, I, I do apologize. All right. So, for today, we are going to learn Hey Joe, a Jimi Hendrix song. For those who don't know, okay, we will learn also the Tom Petty song, uh, Free Fallen, okay, and then we are going to learn Everybody Hurts from uh, the band R.E.M., 
and then the song Sweet Home Alabama from Leonard Skinner. All right, and all of these uh, songs kind of uh, focus on a few different uh, chords. All right. Now, um, I see uh, lots of people um, kind of are having trouble with that B7. Well, uh, you can just put the B7 on the back burner for now, okay? Because um, you will learn, uh, and we're going to use more of the B7 come Monday, but it's just kind of a little bit of a preview of what we're going to get into on Monday. So, uh, during Lesson 7. So... Just make sure that you kind of, if you do have time to pick up your guitars over the weekend, that you do uh, practice that B7. Alright, so, the first song is, um, uh, Ashley has another, uh, has a great question. Is there a tip on how to get the chords to sound clean? Alright, as I am struggling as my fingers are touching the other strings. All right, so great, great question. All right, so l let me put myself up here on the big screen. All right, on um, the big screen. What we want to do, what, what we want to make sure is, first of all, the way how our hand is shaped when we are fretting the guitar. Most of the time, when we are fretting a guitar, right, we want to have curved fingers, right? So you have this curve happening where am I? Right? You have this curve happening right here, right? Right at this knuckle right here, you have this curve happening, right? So we kind of have this claw shape, right? So the fingers are actually perpendicular, okay? Um, the fingers are perpendicular to each, um, to each fret and string, okay? So if I am, you can even see it right here on, on, on the guitar. If my fingers are flat, they are going to touch the other strings. If my fingers are curved, right, you can see how much more, you know, straight on they are. And what does this do? It allows for, it allows for those open strings to be played, right? So... If I'm playing my C major chord, but if I'm holding my C major chord with flat fingers, I'm not going to be able to make it sound good, no matter what I try to do, no matter how long I've been playing the guitar, alright? But what I need to do is kind of curve my fingers, alright? Curve those knuckles, right? That, that first knuckle, okay? So that it is a little bit more... Perpendicular. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, I am doing that, and I'm still not getting the clearest tone, okay? This is why I gave everybody the spider exercise, okay? Because the goal of the spider exercise is to play each note with that proper kind of claw shape, okay? So, uh, if you are having a little bit of trouble grabbing these chords... Uh, I suggest, you know, go back to that spider exercise, you know, and again, the spider exercise is really, really great to help you, um, uh, to help you, um, uh, warm up first and foremost, but also to help your fingers really, um, be in the proper shape that they should be, All right? So, I hope that answers your problem, I hope that, uh, it encourages uh, you to, um, uh, you know, to go back to that spider exercise and, you know, to also, like, keep going uh, as well. Uh, because, again, especially if you are a beginner, if this is, you know, the first few weeks that you've ever played the guitar, you haven't played the guitar in, like, you know, 20 years or something like that, well, yeah, you know, I mean, you, you can't expect miracles in, in, in one day, although... It's all about making baby steps, right? We, we can all take baby steps together. Next thing you know, you're going to be flying, okay? Running a marathon. All right, so let's try Hey Joe, okay? For this, all right, you see uh, the chord names, 
right, you see the chord names uh, C, G, right, D, and A, right, so we just learned our C and G chords, we learned our D and A chords um, a couple days ago, okay, in lesson five, so I'm just going to do a quick demonstration of this first part, all right, so what I want everybody to do with each chord is just a down strum, and each chord gets two down strums. So down, down, and then to the G chord, and then to the D chord, then to the A chord, right? And that's the first section. Now remember with the A chord, there's two different types of fingerings. Okay, so choose whichever fingerings that you want to do. And, and with the G chord, there's the two different kinds of fingerings, so you choose which, whichever G chord you would like to do. Okay? So, I'll do a quick demonstration of this first part, and then also then the second part, and then we'll try to do it together a few times. Okay? So, here we are. Hey Joe. The first section. A one, two, four... I know we're going to take it quite a bit slower than that. Okay. Then, the second part, all right, the second four measures is just the E major chord. So, this whole chord progression is about getting to that E major chord and then repeating that circle. Remember, we said chord progressions um, can be thought of as circular, right? So, here we have, oh, sorry. Uh, here we have the E major chord, the second half. A one, two, three, four. Okay. Now the strumming pattern for the second half is a little bit different over the E major chord. Since we're only sticking on one chord, we kind of have to make the strumming a little bit more interesting. So the strumming is down, 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 up, up, down, 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 up, up, down. All right, one more time. Down, 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 up, up, down. So we have, from the first part and the second part, one, two, to the G, sorry, we start on the C, to the G, to the D chord, then we go to the A chord, and then to the E major, one, two, down, down, up, up, down, down. of the song, all right, so it's just a matter of uh, putting those two together, okay, so let's all try and do that all right now, all right, let's try to put all of these chords together, all right, here we are, a one, two, three, four, C, two, three, four, to the G, two, three, to the That's just the first part, and then we have the second half. All right, so everybody get ready with that E major chord again. We did that on uh, lesson five, so here we are. A one, two, ready, and two, three, four. Down, down, up, up, down. Uh, Hesham has a great question. Uh, I, I should have mentioned this uh, 
Uh, he asks, uh, what about uh, the strumming pattern without a plectrum? Okay, Hashem. Uh, and for everybody who's using uh, your finger, your fingers, right? It's the same, same thing. Remember when we're doing a down strum, we can use our thumb, or you can, we can use this part of our fingers. Okay, and it's the same strumming pattern. So one, two, down, down, up, up, down. When I'm doing an up strum, I'm usually doing an up strum with my thumb. Okay, and then it depends if I want to use my fingers going down or my thumb going down. So again, you could just use your thumb going down. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. You know, so you could just use your thumb the entire time if you want to use your fingers. For the down strums, it requires a little bit more coordination, uh, but it's entirely doable. Okay, so let's try that again. All right, Omawumi says it's so hard switching. Yeah, it, it is uh, a little bit of a challenge, but, you know, that's why I'm here. I'm here to push you, you know, and then when you go, you know, if you do have time to practice, you know, you pick up your time, you're like, ah, oh, actually, it's not as difficult as it was during the lesson. Again, especially if this is your first time learning some of these chords, especially the C and G, could be quite a bit challenging, but hopefully it's getting better and better with each time. So here we are. A one, two, ready, and... Ready, everybody? One, two, ready, and down, two, down, four, down, down, up, up, down, down, two, down, four, down, down, up, up, down. Okay. So, everybody deserves a nice round of applause. Nice, nice round of applause, an initial round of applause, if you will. All right, let's try it again, ladies and gents. A one, whoops, sorry, what happened there? A one, two, ready, and two, First part, right? It's all down strums. It's all down strums for this first part. And also, right, we have a little bit of time in between our C chord and our G chord, or from our G chord to our uh, D chord, right? What we want to get into the habit of doing, right? So if I'm going from the C chord to the G chord. I am moving my fingers and getting them into position, or trying to get them into position in the proper time, right? So, I'm not going one, two, three, four, one, I, I, I'm so used to changing, I can't even do it incorrectly, right? One, two, three, four, one, and then trying to change. Right? I am starting to change. One, two, three, four. Right? I'm already, like, in between, once I play on beat three, I'm already thinking about where my fingers need to go for the next position. All right? So hopefully that is something that everybody is doing. All right? But with the second half of it, you don't have to change your fingerings anywhere. Two... A three and four. One, two, three, four. Down, down, up, up, down, down, two, three, four. Down, down, up, up, down. All right. Nice round of applause.
applause. Nice round of applause. Thank you, everybody. Let's try it again. A one, two, ready, and C, two, three, four, G, two, three, four, to the D, two, three, four, to the A, two, three, four. Let's try it. Second half. A one, two, three, four, E, two, three, four, down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, up, down. All right. How's that going, everybody? How is that coming along? Great. All right, let's try it one more time, and then we'll move on to our next song. Excuse me. A one, two, ready, and C, two, three, four, G, two, three, four, D, two, down, and A, two, down, and, and second half. One, two, ready, and E, two, three, four, down, down, up, up, down, down, two, three, four, down, down, up, up, down. Okay, there we are, ladies and gentlemen. Great job, great job, great job. All right, let's do Free Fallen. All right, and Free Fallen is a song by Tom Petty. And uh, Tom Petty plays uh, this song actually with a capo on the third fret, or as they say in Ireland, a capo on the third fret. Uh, but we'll, we'll talk more about capos or capos uh, in lesson seven. Uh, but we can still play this in the open position with the open D chord. All right, remember all right, what I said about this D to the D sus4 movement. All right, we always want to have this D major, this D major chord shape. Then when we need to press the third fret of the um, high E string with our pinky and and go back to the D major chord, right? We're not kind of letting go and picking up at the same time. We're just we're just worried about one finger. So let me do this demonstration. All right, so free falling. A one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And again, if you're using your fingers, all down strums, okay? So, let's try it, all right? A one, two, uh, what, sorry, one more uh, demonstration. One, two, three, four. Two, 
for. Now remember, I see some comments coming in saying, great song, it is a great song, but remember, uh, they play this in a different key, so if you're trying to play along with the recording, it will sound a little bit off, um, so, uh, again, all of your answers will be answered, or all of your questions, excuse me, will be answered about capos and everything next week, so here we are, let's do this again, um, one, two, ready, and one. time that you've ever tried to play these chords. You're just starting to uh, m memorize uh, this vocabulary. You're just starting to build up that muscle memory. Uh, you know, it's just uh, the first time that you try to learn how to speak another language. If anybody has tried to learn how to speak another language, right, the first day you might learn 20 or 30 or 40 new words. How many of those words do you actually remember by the end of the first day? Well, you'll, you'll be lucky if you remember two or three of them, at least for me. You know? So, you know, again, it's just a matter of practicing, you know, uh, and just being more and more familiar with them. And the more comfortable that you are, the easier and easier it's going to get. So, let's try doing it again. A one, a two, a three... A four, one, two, three, four, two, three, and four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four. Okay, let's do that again. One, two, ready, and one. Thank 
spectrum. So let's try to do this a couple times. So one, two, three, four, five, six. This is still a demonstration. So this is still a demonstration. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So again, it's this P I M A M I finger picking pattern. All right. So. Let's try to do this now, ladies and gentlemen. Let us try and do this. Alright? So, here we are. Um, Alright, so, here we are. It is slower than what I was doing. I just wanted to make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Get ready for the G major. Um, and an A major, but, you know, as long as we start yeah, getting 
our fingers wrapped around that, then we can move forward and learn the rest of the song. This uh, song, Sweet Home Alabama, from Leonard Skinner, uh, we're going to go through this a little bit uh, quickly, um, but this is more of an exercise uh, like Sweet, uh, like Sweet Joe, like Hey Joe <laughs> from Jimi Hendrix, where we're really kind of working on the C chords and the G chord, and especially this D, C, G movement, or, and this combination of chords, all right, the G, the C, and the D are used so, so often together. Like the, but the main gist of the song, I mean, the song does eventually go to an E minor um, and an A major, but, you know, as long as we start you know, getting our fingers wrapped around that, then we can move forward and learn the rest of the song. This uh, song, Sweet Home Alabama, from Leonard Skinner, uh, we're going to go through this a little bit uh, quickly, um, but this is more of an exercise uh, like Sweet, uh, like Sweet Joe, like Hey Joe <laughs> from Jimi Hendrix, where we're really kind of working on the C chords and the G chord, and especially this D, C, G movement, or, and this combination of chords, all right, the G, the C, and the D are used so, so often together, very, very often together, that if we can start getting these um, movements uh, very, very well in our fingers, then we'll be able to play, like, hundreds of songs, literally. Um, it's not a joke, all right? So this is why uh, we got... Um, where we're spending time on these movements, and especially these movements together. So, Sweet Home Alabama, right? D chord, down strum, C chord, down strumming, G chord, down strumming, and it's the same exact uh, strumming pattern as uh, the second half of the uh, Hey Joe. Okay, so one, two, three, four, D. time. One, two, three, four, down, down, C, down, G, down, 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 up, up, down. Okay. So let's try to do that a couple times and then we will wrap it up for today. A one, two, ready, and two. All on stage yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. A one, two, ready, and down, strum, down, strum, down, strum, down, strum, down, strum, down, strum, down, down, up, up, down. All right, so it's all down strums except for that last measure where we go down, down, up, up, down. Okay? One, two, Ready, and down, two, three, four, two, three, four, down, two, three, four, down, down, up, up, down. All right, everybody. So that there is Sweet Home Alabama. Great. and gentlemen, uh, I'm just going to skip through the last one or two that we were going to do because I do want to get to, um, I want to get to who the winner is, all right, so um, today's lesson we did a whole bunch, we learned how to use more chords uh, and we learned some more songs, so really congratulations on 